Hello again. When it comes to what's your favourite model of BBC Micro, I think I'm a bit of an outlier. Most people pick the original Model B, but I actually prefer the BBC Master. And it's not because of the obvious keypad and cartridge slots, it's because it comes with a lot of things as standard that you'd normally add to a Model B to make it more usable. So things like it comes with a disk interface as standard, it has four banks of sideways RAM. It also has an internal tube processor slot, and it has some shadow memory so that when you want to display the screen and for filing system workspace it doesn't use up the main memory. Plus it has an enhanced operating system that makes all this kind of transparent without you having to do anything if you've written the software legally. So, when I was looking for a second BBC machine to go with my master and test out Econet, the Acorn networking system, I thought I'd get a Model B for a bit of variety, but I was a bit concerned about losing all the extra goodies I was used to on the master. However, when scouring eBay, I found a Model B for sale that had an Integra B expansion board. I did a little bit of research into this and found it was a third party attempt to bring many of the enhancements on the master to a Model B, so I thought that would be an interesting choice in itself. So what is the Integra B and how does it differ from other ROM and RAM expansion boards? Well that's what we're going to have a look at today. The Integra B was introduced in mid-1988 and featured in Acorn User in July of that year, with the headline being a way to transform your Model B into a master, which had been released two years earlier, in 1986. The review was very enthusiastic, stating it was an outstanding product, well built and easy to install, as well being very reliable in operation. The only reservation they had was the cost compared to trading in your machine for a new master, especially as there were a number of features on the master that it couldn't add. My Integra B is actually a remake by Ken Lowe, his Revision 2 model from 2019. This is largely identical to the original, but has a number of minor improvements which I'll describe as we go along. Like many other ROM boards for the Model B, it has a number of sockets to install ROM and EEPROM chips to give you extra sideways banks on top of the standard 4 on the Model B's motherboard. There are a number of jumpers which can specify what types of memory chips are used, including support for four 32K chips, write protection, and, with Ken Lowe's recent revisions, EEPROM and flash memory chips. In the first three sockets, I have three 32K EEPROMs which provide six 16K banks, 8 to 13. The final chip is a 32K EEPROM providing the standard BBC BASIC 2 in Bank 14 and the Integra B's own support ROM in 15, the so-called IBOS. The IBOS has to be in Bank 15 so it runs as the highest priority ROM, and the BASIC ROM just fills up the 32K chip but does allow the original BASIC ROM chip to be removed from the motherboard socket. Soldered in next to the IBOS and BASIC ROM are two 32K RAM chips, which provide a further 4x16K of sideways RAM in banks 4 to 7. Jumpers allow these banks to be write protected. Next to the sideways RAM is a soldered in another 32K RAM chip. This is to provide up to 20K of shadow screen memory, an extended print buffer, and some private RAM for storing the Integra B's configuration. And finally, in the back right corner of the board is a rechargeable battery that powers a real-time clock and maintains the contents of the RAM chips, including the sideways banks 4 to 7, and the Integra B's configuration, even when the power to the machine is turned off. Installing the Integra B doesn't require any soldering or other modifications, but it is a little bit fiddly. After opening the BBC's case, you need to stick on these two plastic strips, one to the side and one to the back of the inside of the case. These are to support the inside of the board once it's installed. You then need to very carefully remove the 6502 central processor from its socket on the BBC's main board and insert it into the socket on the Integra B. Then you turn the Integra B upside down and insert the CPU socket riser header into the connectors on its underside. To allow the Integra B to control the paging in of the existing four sideways ROM sockets on the motherboard, it needs to control jumpers S20, 21 and 22, so we need to remove the fixed jumpers on those. We'll connect some wires to these after the board is installed, but removing them is easiest without the board in place. Next, the two power connectors that plug into the BBC's main board near the disk interface are disconnected and attached to the Integra B instead. The board is now ready to be installed. The left edge pushes into the plastic strip alongside the power supply and the back edge rests against the strip on the back of the case. After aligning the CPU riser header on the underside of the Integra B with the 6502 socket on the main board, it can be pushed firmly home. 
The output power connectors from the Integra B then connect back into the mainboard near the disk interface where the removed cables were previously attached. And finally, three wires from the Integra B need to be connected to S20, 21 and 22 where we removed the jumpers from earlier. These are to control the mainboard sideways ROM bank socket paging, changing those to be banks 0 to 3 instead of 12 to 15 as they would be normally as banks 12 to 15 are now on the Integra B itself. OK, so that's the installation done. Let's see what it looks like fitted into the BBC. The Integra B sits fairly central at the back of the case, above the left side of the main board and adjacent to the power supply. The CPU riser takes it up above the connectors at the rear of the machine, including if you've installed an Econet expansion. The cutout in the bottom left leaves space for the floppy disk controller, and the right side is left uncovered, so the large heatsink on the Vidproc ULA is no problem, and the BBC's high-speed RAM is given space for air to circulate. Moving the keyboard out of the way, you can see the original four onboard sideways ROM sockets, which still work but are remapped to banks 0 to 3. The fifth ROM in the leftmost socket is the Acorn machine operating system as normal. The board is fairly well secured from falling out by the slotted strip on the left hand side adjacent to the power supply, the strip on the back edge and the CPU socket riser. Now this um, lip on the inside of the BBC Micro's case lid that um, stops things being pushed in through the vent slots on the back of the uh, machine actually presses down on the back of the Integra B and helps hold it in place um, in addition to the strip on the side next to the power supply and the CPU riser. So that helps stop the board falling out if you were to turn the BBC up on the side or upside down. Um, I've actually installed an extra little IC socket between the top of the CPU riser and the um, Integra B just to get a better connection and also because the riser part is actually quite an expensive, awkward to get hold of piece and I didn't want to damage it. Um, so I've actually had to dremel out an extra little piece of this uh, strip to um, get it to be the right height. Um, I also needed to change one of the screws that comes through the, the back of the case because the normal length one would press up against the uh, jumpers uh, on the Integra B and cause them to short out, so I've changed it for a shorter one that doesn't do that. Now that we're done, we can replace the top cover and power up the BBC. On the initial power up, the Integra B instructions say to hold down the at symbol key to initialise the board to a sensible starting configuration. This key sequence is detected by the Integra B iBoss ROM, and it first asks if you're sure. If you press Y, the configuration is reset, including clearing the battery-backed sideways RAM banks, and the BBC restarts. To anyone who's familiar with a BBC Master, many of the Integra B's extra commands will seem immediately familiar. Let's start with star ROMs. This shows you what's in all the sideways ROM and RAM banks, and you can see I've already populated most of the extra ones with software. The E against RAM banks 4 to 7 show that they're erasable. If I was to change the jumpers to write protect those, this would change to a P for protected. The S indicates a service ROM providing extra operating system calls and star commands, and L a language ROM that can provide an application environment. Like a master, I can use star unplug to software disable a ROM, preventing it from being initialized on reset. Star ROMs will then show a U against the ROM in the second column indicating it's unplugged. Star insert will re-enable it for the reset, and these settings are remembered on power off. You also have the full set of commands to load and save banks compatible with those on the master. And the battery on the Integra B maintains the contents of RAM banks 4 to 7 on power off, so you can keep things in there between boots. OK, so what we've seen up till now is fairly common for many ROM boards on the BBC B, but let's have a look at one of the more unique features of the Integra B, the battery backed startup configuration. Immediately familiar to anyone who's used a BBC Master, the star status command shows the startup configuration, where you can set things like the initial filing system, language, serial port and keyboard rates. For example, my TV picture is a little too low on the screen and is chopping off the cursor on the final line, so I can reset the TV vertical display offset to centre the screen on my monitor. Right, so now I've got the TV picture nicely centred, I can change file to set the startup filing system ROM number, so I can choose MMFS in bank 7 if I want. Now this is handy as the BBC Micro offers no way to select this on startup, by default it selects the filing system in the highest numbered ROM bank. Another option is to enable or disable the tube second processor. On a stock BBC that would always be enabled and there's no way to disable it. I'll just disable that again to demonstrate the next part though. One configuration setting not on the master is OS mode. 
This selects the type of machine the Integra B attempts to emulate. The default is 4, which is a B+, and is indicated by the new banner on Reset that replaces BBC Computer with BBC Micro Integra B. The main benefit this gives you is shadow memory for the screen, which is handy as the BBC's high-resolution graphics can eat a lot of memory. For example, with all the filing system ROMs I've got in here, DFS, ADFS, MMFS, ANFS, memory for BASIC starts at hex 2200, and in mode 1, which is 320 by 256 in 4 colours, you lose 20k of RAM for the display, bringing high mem down to hex 3000 and leaving you only 3.5k free. But, like a BBC B or Master, if you add 128 to the mode number, the extra RAM on the Integra B is used for the screen, raising high mem up to 8000 hex, higher even than the text modes on the standard B, giving you a more respectable 23.5k free. This does have a performance hit though. Let's enable the tube second processor in the configuration and load up the Sphere graphics and CPU benchmark. Being in an OS mode other than zero gives a performance impact as the operating system calls for graphics and text need to be intercepted regardless of whether a shadow mode is in use or not. This is most severely noticed when driving the graphics hard with a fast second processor like the PyTube Direct. The Spear demo takes 2.0 seconds for each cycle instead of around one and a half. On the standard 2 MHz 6502, however, the performance penalty is only half a second, going up from 43 seconds to 43 and a half. The penalty is a little noticeable printing a lot of text, such as listing a long program though. But do notice you can change the OS mode without resetting, which is fairly nifty. All the operating system VDU calls for text and graphics are handled correctly, so legally written software will just work without issue. Unfortunately, things which access the memory directly won't work, such as most games and the Aconsoft graphics extension ROM, giving an error saying it's incompatible. You can, however, set OS mode to zero to disable all the shadow memory features, but it does leave the rest of the Integra B available, including things like the startup configuration and real-time clock. Speaking of the real-time clock, the Integra B has a battery backed up time of day clock that you can read and set with star time and star date. Until it's set, it's stuck at midnight at the turn of the century, but from then on the rechargeable battery will keep it ticking. Also, the iBoss has been patched to update the century post-2000. The iBoss also implements the same Osword calls as the BBC Master to return the current time and date. Now, BASIC 2 on the Model B predates the clock and doesn't support the time string pseudo variable, but High BASIC does and the calls give back the correct time. One particularly useful aspect of the Integra B is that it lets you easily reconfigure your machine for different purposes. For example, normally I'm programming using a tube processor, so having all the filing system service and language ROMs enabled doesn't matter as I'm not using the memory on the host processor. If however I want to play a game, I have to disable the tube and unplug all the unneeded filing systems to get enough main memory back. The iBoss's star C save and star C load commands make it easy to change between different configurations and ROM settings. And when I want to switch back to my tube setup with all the filing systems, I can just load back in my original configuration. As mentioned earlier, Ken Lowe's updated Integra B supports EE prompts that can be programmed in situ, and I've got an updated version of the MMFS SD card filing system to test out, so I'd like to install that. My Model B uses the sideways RAM version that avoids raising page. The MMFS bootstrap is in bank 13 and copies itself to RAM bank 7 if it's missing or overwritten. I went through how that works in detail in my review of the Elk SD64. EE proms are normally locked against writing and need to be unlocked by writing a special byte pattern to some specific addresses. If you write any other address or value, the EEPROM goes to sleep for a bit and doesn't respond to reads or writes, which will often crash the system. For this reason, they also need to be hardware write protected using the Integra B's jumpers when you're not planning to write them. To avoid crashing, I find the best thing to do is to software disable the sideways banks served by the EEPROM before hardware write enabling them. As these are 32k chips, bank 13 shares it with 12, which is ADFS here. Once that's done, I can power off and move the write protect jumper to the write enable position. Now I can power back on and software unlock the EEPROM. You need to specify the numbers of both banks as the unlock sequence talks to both halves. After this, I can load in the new content and relock the chip. 
You need to remember to have all the needed utilities to hand, including the filing system to load the data from. In my case, the battery back sideways rammed FANGS 4-7 keep the MMFS alive that was installed by the now unplugged old bootstrap ROM. And I can now reinsert the bootstrap ROM, reset with control break, and the new ROM will be copied to bank 7, hoping that everything went OK. All looks good, so I can power off the machine and replace the right protect jumper, and then we're done. One final thing. I've resurrected my lockup sideways ROM from the Acorn Electron AP6 review and installed it in battery backed bank 4. Once there, the system will get stuck on boot up or reset. So how can I recover this without having to take out the battery or moving the jumper to clear the RAM, including the configuration? Well, if you hold down the at symbol whilst pressing control break, you'll get back to an iBoss system reset, what we saw before. Here you can answer no and you'll be dropped into a star command prompt, where you can change settings, unplug or erase ROMs. I can then unplug the faulty ROM and control break again, and the system is back up for me to finish the recovery properly. OK, um, I think I'll stop there now. I haven't covered everything, such as the extended print buffer, but the things I have covered are probably the most interesting uh, parts about the Integra B. Um, if you don't have an Integra B, or even a BBC Micro for that matter, then you can emulate both with BBM on Windows or MacOS. Um, as you know on this channel, I've tried to cover things that uh, other people haven't covered. Um, and I don't think anyone's done a review of the Integra B, at least not for something like 35 years. Um, so I hope you found it interesting and possibly even useful. Um, so from a very hot studio, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.